This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Sister Power's vision is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. Our topic for this episode is make your passion your paycheck. This afternoon, our Sister Power VIP guest, Lori LaGrange, founder and president of On Time LaGrange and Associates. On Time LaGrange and Associates is a full service public relations firm specializing in development and execution of communications and public relations programs, community relations, special events planning, and crisis communications and media relations. Welcome to Sister Power, Lori. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sharon. Oh, thank you. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and a background of your uh, business, On Time LaGrange. Mm -hmm. So I started in public relations straight out of college. It was, it, it just happened because I had thought I wanted to go into advertising, but there were no jobs available at that time. So someone said to me, well, why don't you go into public relations? And I had no idea what it was, but I applied for a job and I got it. And so that was, you know, about 35 years ago. <laughs> no. Yes. So I worked for one of the large agencies here in Honolulu. And um, agency work is tough. You know, it's very fast paced. A lot of um, jobs you have to do. You have to multitask. And it was great as a first job because I learned a lot. But then I got married. And like a lot of moms and dads, or future moms and dads, you think about, okay, can you really sustain this and have work-life balance? And my husband was in the hotel industry. So I worked for the agency for about five years, learned a lot, and then decided um, after we got married that, that something needed to change. And public relations was my passion. I, I really loved it. So I decided to go on my own. And that was in 1991. And one of the things that I did was I purposely did not take any clients with me. It was a leap of faith, you know, because in this industry, in this, on this island, you don't want to burn any bridges. So I left with nothing. I set up my phone in my house and my computer, and the rest is history. That's what I did. Wow. That is, that, mm -hmm. So public relations, that's your passion. It is. It is. So tell us, what is public relations? What does public relations mean to you? Public relations is really hard for a lot of people to understand. And I don't think my dad ever understood what I did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> public relations is the art of communicating. And you use different tools to communicate. So for example, we write what's called a press release. And you basically sum up what your message is about your client. What benefits do they, do they provide? What do they do? Um, what's the news story there? So we do that as one item. We send out these press releases to the media. The second way that we do this is we work with the news media. So we work with them to convince them that we have a story to tell that viewers and readers really want to learn about. And we're going to talk about the benefits of our client, what our client provides to the community um, what makes us different from our competitors? So a press release is, is, is one, then working with the news media is another. Another thing that we do is we coordinate special events. Mm. So we may put together a special event for a new business, to celebrate an anniversary, um, to showcase a new product, to once again share with everyone what it is we do and what are the benefits. In Hawaii, another area that's really, really important is community relations. So we are a, com a small community. And some of the work that I do is working with companies from the mainland. Because as you know, someone that moved here, right? Yes. It's very different. And you have to, you have to respect the way that people do business here. And you have to understand what's important to them. And you have to be a part of, a, of the community. So I do a lot of counseling in that area, too. And then as you mentioned, when you were talking about you know, what my company does, we also do crisis communication. And that's a really tough area because when you're 
faced with a crisis, you have to act fast and you have to really use your communication skills to communicate to everyone that, you know what, we care and, and we know we made a mistake and this mm -hmm. is what we're doing to fix it and this is what we're doing to make sure it doesn't happen again. So in a nutshell, that's what public relations is about. And I think one of the things that people get confused about is how is that different than advertising? So when you look at advertising, advertising is you buy an ad, you create an ad, and you buy the space. And you have total control over what's in that ad and where you're placing it. With public relations, when we work with the news media, we can't buy it. We have to convince them that our story is worthy to tell. And we don't have total control over that content. So you really have to hone in on your communication skills to make sure that that story is the message that you want to share. And that's so important. I, and I, I'm glad I have this opportunity to, to thank you to help with the success of our Sisters Empowering Hawaii's second annual Women Making History. You were calm and cool and collective, <laughs> and you were there at all times. And I think that people should really understand the importance of having a public relations firm on their side. Um, another question, what skills have you acquired that you would help would help you communicate a client's message. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about that briefly, but right. I think that's what the important part of get, conveying that message to the person. You have to be a good writer. Mm -hmm. um, I would say 80% of your job is writing. So you have to be very succinct in your writing, um, get to the point, because when you're working with the news media, they're only gonna read your headline and maybe the first two sentences, and then they're going to decide whether this is even worth going beyond that. That's number one. Number two, you have to have good people skills. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to convey energy. You have to convey passion about what it is you're trying to get people to understand or to buy into. Um, and you have to have good phone skills, too, because you're calling people a lot. You're doing follow-up calls. Um, you have to be able to... You know, we're like salesmen, basically. Yeah. We're selling a story. And we're selling a story on behalf of our clients. So that's what we do. And what I'm hearing is connect, connect, connect. Mm -hmm. Rapport, rapport, rapport. And I think that people uh, think that networking is old-fashioned, and it's not. Mm -hmm. Talk about the importance of networking. So with public relations, you're networking with the media all the time. And you're building trust with them. Because if you sell them something and it's not totally uh, trustworthy or there's some mistake, they're not gonna trust you again mm. because you're, you're messing with their livelihood. Um, so it's networking with the media. It's, you know, when you're building your business, it's looking at organizations and looking at the membership of those organizations. Um, are these members potential clients? Uh, it's also good to network with your peers, you know, because you can share a lot of good information. And I think in general, Public relations people are very people oriented because that's yes. what we do. You know, we're very sharing. We're not necessarily cutthroat. Um, so, when you talk about networking, especially in Hawaii, it's really good to do that. Absolutely, and also we did, we, we we chatted briefly on the phone uh, about this about networking. Mm -hmm. And I think that people forget that being a good volunteer is one of the traits of success, mm -hmm. that it's important to get out there and volunteer. What are your thoughts about that? I think volunteering in general is good for the soul. Mm. You know, I think it's good for your heart. I think it gives you purpose. When you can apply your talent to helping a cause to better people, that's really gratifying. It really is. And, and volunteering can come in different ways. I mean, it can be straight out donating your time. It can be giving a substantial discount. It can be um, rallying mm -hmm. your clients to provide donations for a cause. So I think it's really important to do that. Sometimes we get too caught up in, you know, making money and being success successful, and we forget you know, the importance of, of supporting our community. Um, it's important. Yeah, it's all about giving back. Mm -hmm. And another question for you, not everyone is cut out to work for themselves mm -hmm. or striking out on their own. What are some of the basic steps of becoming an entrepreneur? You have to be willing to take a risk. 
because um, let's face it, it is a risk. You know, that you don't have a guarantee of a monthly paycheck. And so you have to understand that. And the way that you're going to get over that is, are you truly passionate about what you want to do? Do you truly believe in yourself that you can do this? And are you being true to yourself in, in thinking, OK, I've got the skills to do this, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this work? And are you willing to work 24 seven? Because basically, that's what you have to do because you are your brand. You know, when you're out there, you're branding yourself because your name is on that company. That's right. And someone told me, every time you step out the door, especially when you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you are representing your brand. And that's very important. Our next, my next question for you, what is the best way as a solo entrepreneur to let people know about your business? List the top three to five things one should and should not do. Mm -hmm. So I would say, okay, so the top three would be to create a card letting them know that you're there and that you've done this. So that's what I did. Created an announcement card, sent it out to everybody on my contact list. Um, number two is networking, going out there, meeting people. Um, and number three is calling your contacts to let them know that I'm here, I'm doing this, I would love to have you as a client. Those are the top three. Top three mistakes would be to think it's easy, mm. to think that you, in fact, um, are the cat's meow, that you're going, you know, you don't have to do much, you know, that you're going to succeed. That, that's, not, that's not a good attitude to have because that's what you're going to convey. You know, always stay humble when you're out there. Always, always treat your clients, and, and this is something I learned from my first boss, always treat your clients as if they are the only one. Regardless of whether you are ready to climb the wall because you've got everyone that wants something, mm -hmm. they should never know that. You know, I, I really, I cringe when people say to you, I am so busy, let me call you back. You know, that, that's, that's not good. The third thing is um, be very aware of what you say. You know, whether it be someone, the, the temptation to talk, what we say talk stink, <laughs> about, you know, a competitor Anyone. or somebody, right? Because it'll always come back to you. So live your life the way you should is basically the thing. Those are some excellent points. And I know in this today's society, mm -hmm. talking on the telephone is just like, you know, you're in the 1900s <laughs> almost. But I find it's very important to hear the passion in that person's mm -hmm. voice when I'm asking them to speak or if I'm asking them uh, to meet with them. I do like to pick up the telephone and call that person. Right. It's kind of, it's becoming a lost art. Yes. That and in, in, in meeting in person is becoming a lost art, you know, because of technology. But there's so much that you can convey, you know, through your voice, through your presence, through your gestures. That's all the art of communicating. Well, we have more things to, to discuss, Lori, and we'll be right back. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Hi guys, it's RB Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool, and I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm RB Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. Well, we are back with Lori LaGrange, Make Your Passion, Your Paycheck, Making Money While Doing What You Love. And I 
I love putting on events. That's something that when you, that's a passion that I can, you could do it for free. And I think mm -hmm. people should to understand that, that when it's a passion that you love doing, that's your area of expertise. Right. So who was your greatest mentor? Gosh, um, I would have to say it's not necessarily a mentor. Mm -hmm. My greatest cheerleader was, is probably my husband. Because, yeah. you know, when we talked about it, me doing this, you know, he knew I was very stressed out. Because when I was at the agency, I handled travel, public relations. So a lot of hotels, visitor associations. And it, 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 there was a lot of traveling. The industry itself is very volatile, you know. And, and so when we discussed this possibility, he was actually my biggest cheerleader. And he still is. Mm, you know, mine too. He, yeah, he yeah. believed in me. He said, if that's what you want to do, then do it. And we'll figure this out and we'll get there, you know, and, and even to this day, he actually, he's, he's the best, you know, and you have to have that support. You have to find that person that's going to boost you up, that's going to make you feel good. So my advice, another advice, surround yourself with positive people, people who are going to help you along the way. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have ups and downs. Yes. You're going to have periods where you think, Oh my goodness, you know, business is kind of slow right now. But you have to keep the faith. And, and one way you keep that faith is by having good people in your life. That's really important. Very important. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about something that I think people take for granted. The business card. Mm -hmm. Because that's an extension of you. What are some of the do's and don'ts for the new entrepreneur that's stepping out on faith, because that's what it takes, mm -hmm. and courage? Mm -hmm. You need cur courage and faith, and of course, your expertise and your passion. Right. Just touch a little bit about the business card. Business cards have to be easy to read. They have to represent who you are. So if you're in marketing, it should be something that's creative. It should be something that's vibrant that stands out from all the rest. So you don't, if you're in marketing and you're promoting yourself as a creative person, you don't want something that's printed in black and white that, I'm sorry, looks like an attorney card, Ooh. right? With no images or anything, just, just you know, because that's what they need, yeah. right? Um, and you have to put pertinent information on there. So I would say put your cell phone on there because you have to be accessible. You have to show them that you're accessible. I like that. And what about the front and back? Uh, they have the, do you prefer the fold cards, you being a public relations mm -hmm. person, and really it's when you're meeting someone in a networking event, right. you have the elevator pitch. You, you should tell the person in about a minute or less about yourself, right. and then you're handing the business cards. So on the back of it, should it have more information? So I'm talking from a personal standpoint for what I did. Um, I don't necessarily like the fold ones because people are going to put in their wallet. They're going to put it somewhere so it can't be thick. It mm -hmm. has to be somewhere that can be stored easily and not take a lot of room. So I put an image, a catchy image on the front that to me conveyed um, energy and talent and the colors were good. Um, and then on the back, I have the information, address, cell phone, email address. So the front has my name and basically under my name, it just says public relations slash special events. So it sums it up. What do you do? Oh, I like that. What lessons has your work life taught you? I think for me, it's taught me that nothing is impossible. Mm. You know, that you can really do what you want to do if you're willing to put the work into it. Um, it also taught me as a mom that you can have it all, Ooh. you know, because my kids, I call my business a life business. So my sister was my partner for many years and we raised our young children with our business. So we would go to all their field trips. If they were sick, we had this little corner in our office with, you know, the video and, and we would put them there on their little blankets. And it's taught me that there are ways for you to find life balance. Sometimes you just have to think out of the box. Yeah, you do have to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on right now. It's right. Really, we, we're living in a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to women starting their own business? Mm -hmm. Whether you're a man or a woman, I think the advice is the same. It's, you know, take a risk. It, it, it's perhaps the first step is to do pros and cons. Mm. You know, what are the pros and cons of you doing this? 
And can you, when you look at that con list, can you overcome that? You know, can you take the risk financially, personally? Um, does it fit, fit your personality? Because if you're someone that will not be able to handle it, if you have a month or two where it's really slow, then it might not be for you. You know, so that would be my first advice. The second advice would be true, be true to who you are. You know, don't become desperate. Because mm. if you become desperate, sometimes you do things that you might regret. What do you mean don't become desperate? If you, say for example, if you have a product or a service and it's just, it's going a little slow right now. You know, don't, don't have that desperate sound in your voice where you're calling people saying, hey, you know, you really need to help me out because it's oh. kind of slow right now. Or, hey, you know, I'm having a special, you know, or, hey, I'll do this for you for free. Or, hey, you really shouldn't use her. I'm much better. You know, that desperation sometimes makes us do things that aren't the best thing for us and in the long run. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you have to live with yourself and you be do. happy with what you do. Because when you start off being an entrepreneur and that mm -hmm. passion is there, you're doing something you love, mm -hmm. um, that's a very good point to consider do not be desperate right who inspires you god <laughs> oh my main man <laughs> i think god other women like you you oh. know i get inspired by people who are so successful but they're really good people you know that's who inspires me mm -hmm. because you don't have to be someone that's not very nice in order to succeed and then when you look at success, everyone defines success in a different way. Well, how do you define success? I define success with the fact that my boys, who are now 24 and 19, they love hanging out with us. Oh. You know, they, and, and, and I have a loving husband, and I have balance. I have great clients. Um, I pick and choose my clients, and they've been with me for a really long time, and I have fun. I have a lot of fun. And, and life is good. Life is good. And when you're having fun doing what you love to do, you give more. Mm -hmm. You give more of yourself. Exactly. And good referrals. Yes. They it's make all good, by word of mouth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good referrals. Yep. And I think another um, subject, subject I want to mm -hmm. broach on that I feel is important as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is just sending that thank you note. Yes. Saying thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that people send it usually, I'm an old-fashioned girl, so mm -hmm. I still write thank you notes. I mm -hmm. still call people. I just don't send out uh, via email. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is your recommendation, especially to a client that you want to hold on to, you've had fun with, mm -hmm. and you want to continue to work with? You know, I, my clients become my friends, Ooh. really. And I remember when I was at the agency, my boss said that to me. She said, you know, one thing about you is your clients become your friends. I mean, we share, you know, we share our lives. We know about each other's kids. We know when something happens, which may not be so good, we're there to support each other. And that's what, that's what keeps them there, you know? And it's trust. It goes back to relationships building relationships. That's true. Having your own business is like having a husband. Mm -hmm. You make that commitment. Right. You're honorable with each other. Um, you love each other. And it's just a different type of love. Mm -hmm. So why do you love PR? I love it because it can do amazing things. You know, and, and when I talk with clients and I go out there into the community and I find really great organizations for them to support. It's really gratifying, you know? And, and when we travel to the neighbor islands and I meet people and they need help and I bring these partnerships together, to me, that's really what it's all about, truly, you know? So I think sometimes people are get confused with public relations and marketing. Mm -hmm. And there's a balance there. One needs each other. Right. So the way that I would explain it is that marketing is the umbrella. Okay, so that's the overall um, term that you would use. Under marketing, you have different components. So under marketing, you have advertising, you have public relations, you have direct mail, you have social media, and all of those different components work together in the overall marketing of a company. Wow, that's good. 
And you, and you briefly mentioned about press releases. Mm -hmm. If there's a pause in your business and you do not have anything going on, is that something that you should think about doing in between where there's a pause in your business? As far as writing a press release on yes. yourself? Well, um, just your business, your mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, I think you can give advice mm -hmm. or whatever the, the occasion may be. I think press release serves a different purpose. Okay. Okay. Press release is used to share something that is newsworthy. So if you've got some downtime, I would suggest, you know, there's different things you can do. You can volunteer for different organizations. You can go and network more often. You can go to um, events that organizations host. Get involved in your community. I think that was one of where I first met you at American Red Cross. That's right, yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. That was one of my very first events that I did. And then from there, you meet people and it grows. and. Things happen. And I'm still in contact with the people at the Red Cross. Yeah. When you say keeping those friendships and those partnerships, that is so vital. Share a few tips of how an entrepreneur mm -hmm. can move consistently toward their goals and making their passion their paycheck. Mm -hmm. Tips. Um, remember who you are and why you're doing it. Okay. Uh, because if you forget, why this is important to you, you're going to lose your passion. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the passion anymore, then it's time for a change. If you remember the passion and you keep it in your heart and your soul and everything you do, that's what's going to propel you forward. For me, it was having life balance and to be able to continue doing what I really like doing. And that's what's kept me going. And, and, and when you have that energy, you attract people and your clients, you do good work. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. This has been so informative to me, and I always enjoy speaking with you. Thank As you. my husband always says, school is never out. It You're always is. open to learn. <laughs> and we want to thank everyone for watching Sister Power. I'm Sharon Yarbrough, Oceans of Aloha, Peace and Love.